Hey everyone. So before I start the video, I just wanted to do a quick preface and say that this video is going to be about installing the Rally Sim Fans or Hungarian plugin, the HU plugin that it is referred to. Uh, that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, we're not going to talk about other plugins, just this one for this video. I may, if you guys have enough interest and want, we can discuss installing uh, the check plugin. Uh, as well in another video. I'm not a programmer. Uh, I'm not an expert. There's definitely people in the community much more uh, experienced and knowledgeable than I am. But as a fan of Sim Rally Racing, I wanted to put this together just for any new people who are getting into it for the first time. So let's jump right into it. So if you've not played Richard Burns, maybe you watched Jimmy Broadbent's video, uh, recently and you want to try Richard Burns I'm gonna show you a little bit of how to go about doing this so you need to go to this website here rallysimfans.hu okay this will take you here the first thing you need to do is uh, create an account so you can you can register an account I'm already signed into mine but that's pretty simple and basic you know put in an email that so once you have your account registered then you want to download the game in order to do that you click here to downloads and you will download the installer here now this time they are being overloaded I assume because of Jimmy's video so there's a lot of people installing it right now so you may need to use a torrent but you normally would install the installer run the installer you may get a warning for trusted content, uh, in which case you just need to click more info and trust anyway. You choose your language and here you'll be given kind of a, an overview of what's going to be installed. They credit everyone. They show all the support teams. They mention everybody's name who's, you know, developed stages, etc. On the first page, the second, when you hit next, you'll choose where you want to install it. So I've already got the game installed. Let me just pick a spot here and then we need to add, you know, a name for it. And then obviously if this is the first time you're installing it, you want to do full installation, hit next. And this is the page where you're going to choose everything to install. You can basically leave this as it is. The only thing that you may want to look at is going to be the navigator sounds. So the co-driver, you need to pick uh, your particular language so if you speak English then you would want to choose the English navigator I don't know this is the original English navigator so uh, I haven't tested any of these I don't know how good they are I don't know how they work the original navigator does not have a lot of um, options we'll get more into pace notes later but it comes with the base game so you don't even need to purchase the game although that can be up to you you can find copies of the game on eBay I own a copy of the game I would recommend it but uh, because the company's out of business now uh, and then all the extra content that they have uh, gotten the license to use so the audio updates the F mod the paste note plugin from worker B uh, the, the gauger plugin the NGP car menu etc maps are the stages they make up the majority of the download almost 80 gigs if you're gonna download every stage uh, Obviously, I would recommend installing all the stages because uh, depending on you know, what online rally you do, uh, you know, you're going to need those stages anyway. But just so you know, it's a little over 80 gigs and then you also need to account for car models, which I don't believe are included in this, but they're going to be downloaded on a case by case basis, depending on which cars you want to use. So it may be close to 100 gigs if you have every piece of content. You'll then uh, hit next and this will take you to some additional tasks that the HU plugin takes care of for you. It basically sets up some of the INI uh, value or values in the INI files for you. And it's a nice thing because um, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit of extra work with an older game like this to adjust uh, INI values. It's not hard and I'll walk you through some of that, um, but this will do a lot of it for you. Basically, because there's so many mods and plugins developed for Richard Burns at this point, most of them are controlled by the INI files. So when a plugin or a 
mod runs, it goes and looks to the INI file to determine what values to pull in. And so this will set some of that for you. Yeah, I'd recommend turning that on. You can you can leave these things. Uh, you know, if you want to add the cars, tracks, pictures, icons, sure. Uh, I'm actually not familiar with this RX plugin is. Uh, there's adapted force feedback in the game. I don't recommend it. You can always turn it on later. You can leave it on to start, but it says right here, disable if it makes RBR run unstable. I would deselect it. I don't feel that it, it feels better. Some people do. It's just a personal thing. But you need to make sure it actually works properly too. And then there's a few other things, automatic navigation to the menu screen, we'll talk about that later. Uh, your screen resolution, so like this is my triple monitor setup, you need to make sure. Uh, the way I understand it, Richard Burns does need to run on the primary monitor. So if, if you have multiple monitors, uh, you need to have the monitor that you want to run the game on be the primary monitor. And that's why it's choosing this, because it's just going to choose what the primary is. You want to enable window running because you can't alt tab without the game crashing if you don't. And then desktops. Um, and then of course, you know, you may want to go ahead and install DirectX 9C. Just let it do that. So you'll hit next and then it's ready to install. Since I've already installed the game, I'm going to skip ahead to after the install is over and we actually open the game for the first time. Okay, so once you have the game installed, you're going to see several icons on your desktop. There's going to be this icon here, Rally Sim Fans RBR, and there's going to be this this other icon, Rally Sim Fans NGP Switcher. My recommendation is you just you put this in a different spot. You can put it in your documents folder like I did or somewhere else. Um, unless you're someone who's going to run the original physics, you want to run the latest NGP6 and that's what's going to be updated on the main Rally Sim Fans um, you know, EXE when you run it and it's automatically set to NGP6. So <clears throat> before you start the game of course you want to have your wheel plugged in and turned on uh, and then you are ready to just start the game. So we're going to double click on this. Okay. Now usually you would have music in the background, I've turned it off. So you see how it skipped all the menus? That's because we have automatic menu skip on. Okay, so you're, you're, you're put, you know, you have this screen in front of you. You have online rally, time trial or hot lap ranking, practice, options, utilities, and credits. So they do credit everyone there in the credits. The utilities is not something you need to worry about. Uh, options is not actually game options. This is going to be other options that are related to the fix up plugin and things like that. Um, you can show the split times, you can show how many splits, you can automatically download models of the cars, restore cars. If you want to do automatic gears but not recommended, definitely make sure gasket fix is on this automatic. I would just leave this alone for now. F mod, you want to make sure that's on as well. The problem is, is if you go right into practice or racing from here, um, you may not have your settings right. So what you want to do first is hit escape, and that brings you back to the main options menu. Okay, so from here you can go through the, the options within Richard Burns. On the screen, there is uh, Digi Dash options, which I'll talk about later, um, but you can just leave those on and you, know, you can choose if you want to have checkpoints on or off um, and then you can do a full size dash or a mini size there's different dashboards available i'm going to put some links for downloads in the description and we may also talk about that in the folders audio the way it's going to come set is pretty much how you want to leave it uh, the, the guys who created the fmod audio recommend these settings the only thing that you really want to mess with is your co-driver. So obviously you need your co-driver loud enough that you can hear it. Um, and then I, I, you know, I've turned the music off, but that's up to you. Okay, controls. You go in here. The first thing you want to do is controller setup and then controller setup. Don't worry about doing redetect devices or any of this. It should automatically be there. So you, you pretty much want to clear everything out. 
there I think it will be that way for the most part but depending you might have left and right you might have an accelerate and brake on the same you don't want to do that so you want to make sure that you clear it out and then just go through and set your settings one of the things with with RBR is you you cannot save multiple controller setups so if you drive a car if you have like a fanatic shifter that has the H pattern and the sequential and you drive some cars that use an H pattern and some cars that use a sequential you'll have to come into the options and change that every time okay so like for now right now I've got gear up and gear down set for my sequential but if you wanted to come in and set actual gears you need to do it here reverse first second third through all, all the way through sixth and you want to delete these so you just hit the delete button or hit enter to, to set them once you set your controls you'll hit backspace to go back and then you want to backspace after you're done with all the options you want to backspace out to the main menu that's going to ask if you want to save those controls so if you don't go all the way back to the main menu it's not going to save the controls the next time you load the game or the next time you load a stage even so you need to make sure you do that but we're still in the options doing some things force feedback is pretty straightforward um, you your direction probably is on normal but I guess if you get in and it feels flip floppy backwards then you can always go to a, an inverse and then you just basically set your strength you can do a test here that's you know you can kind of figure it out before you go out on the on a stage so that's good um, filter settings I'm gonna leave if you have a gamepad or buttons you may want to look at this but uh, for the most part it's just basically will allow you to set that if if you push a button you can actually create curves so that they don't it doesn't instantly go from 0 to 100 it'll it'll ramp up to it so you can you can adjust that if you use a gamepad pace notes so default they're gonna be on like this there's gonna be um, you know if you want to show the distance and if you want to have a distance countdown lit shown on the screen so the first thing to note is if you turn pace notes to off it doesn't mean that you don't have pace notes it just means the visual pace notes are not going to be shown the audio audio pace notes will always be on unless you turn the audio down in which case they won't be or unless maybe the stage or the rally doesn't allow pace notes but otherwise it's going to be they will remain on so this is just pace notes visually on the screen if you turn these on that's gonna pace put a pace note in the top middle of your screen um, you know when he makes the call okay there's additional to that um, there are 3d pace notes 3d pace notes will be to the right of your screen and they are related to the pace note stack so in other words you can stack notes and it'll show you the next four notes coming and it'll be kind of like a scroll that's happening off to the on the right side of your screen um, so if you if you want to kind of see what's coming ahead a little better you want to put 3d pace notes on with a stack now personally I run with them off because I want to be a little more authentic and I like the immersion and once you turn the notes off and you just learn to listen uh, it actually is cleaner it's better I think it's it's just a little more immersive to me call out distance is um, just how far ahead you want the notes to call so you just you're gonna have to play with this a little bit because you need to just find a, a reasonable spot where it's not calling too far ahead but it's not calling too late if you're in a fast car and then language um, we'll talk about this more later but I've got a specific set of pace notes uh, a co-driver that um, you know someone in the community has made and his requires that you use the French language but um, normally you would just put it whatever language you're on gears you want manual gears and you want to turn all these things off these things actually kind of cause issues um, but you can damage the gearbox if you're not careful the interesting interesting thing about Richard Burns it doesn't actually require a clutch to shift even if you're in a manual H pattern car um, you won't do damage to the gearbox in that way but you can do get damage by over revving and things like that default settings just obviously turns everything back to default we're not gonna mess with that and plugins is important okay but first now that we did these changes we're gonna hit I'm gonna I'm gonna do this just so you can see 
I hit backspace two times to go back to the main menu and it asks me if I want to save. I'm going to hit no because I don't want to. <clears throat> if you come back to this menu, this is the original Richard Burns Rally menu. And all of these items up here, you don't want to mess with. All you want to do is come to options. Okay, you go to options, then you go to plugins, and this is where all the plugins for the game are. The only one you need to worry about right now is Rally Sim Fans. This takes you to where we were before, back to the screen. But when you first start the game, you need to do this to set up your, um, you know, your controls, the audio, things like that. Because otherwise, you might get in a stage and you might not have any controls at all. Okay, so let's look at the three game modes within the Rally Sim Fans plugin. First, let's go through practice. When you practice in the HU plugin, you basically are you're brought to this page here where you can choose everything about the stage you're about to practice. Uh, practice is only going to be one stage at a time. You can't set up a stack of stages. If you look off to the right of the screen, uh, on the right side you see the weather, the tire selection, the stage we've chosen, and the car that's chosen. And then you have this menu. Uh, I should have prefaced this before, but Richard Burns does not support mouse, so you have to use your keyboard. <clears throat> so we have our stage here. You can uh, left and right through the stages, or better, you can hit enter, go in, and you'll have a full stage list. I've actually heard that they're updating this stage list as well. A lot of stages, believe me. And one of the great things about HU plugin is it includes uh, BTB stages. This is a positive and negative for some people when it comes to the competitive side, but BTB are Bob Track Builder stages. And so there are some additional stages that were usually used for offline, but in this case, sometimes we can use them for online. So we've chosen our stage. Now, uh, Torsby uh, and, and all stages have three different road surface um, wear levels that they can have. And based on what online rally you're in and what they're trying to mimic, that will be different. So we have a new, normal, and worn. So you can choose that here in practice. Torsby does not have a wetness. Let me choose a different stage just to show that. So obviously there's a dry, there's damp, and there's wet. Uh, and these will vary the grip level and how the road feels, uh, you know, depending on what you choose or what is chosen for you. Uh, there is good, bad weather, uh, and this will determine if it's raining or not. So if the weather is set to bad and the sky is set to rain, heavy, light, then you will have bad weather. This is how Richard Burns dealt with weather in the original game, and so they're using what they have to work with and they built it this way into the plugin. The second part that you'll get to after you set your stage is the car. The car again you can use the left and mouse button to go through or better yet you can hit enter and it'll give you a full list of all the different car classes available. When you have selected a car initially, let's select this one here. Uh, actually, I have already downloaded that one. Let me select this one here. If you haven't downloaded it, the download here will be lit up and it will say physics and setup. In other words, you can hit enter and download this car to your folders. It will communicate with the server and download it and, as well as default setups, models, and FMOD sounds if they're available. And that brings us to the car audio and the FMOD sounds. Let me go back into here and show you. You can see down here in the bottom right hand corner, there is uh, under audio, they have a sound bank listed here. Uh, basically, it's just a, a name of what they call it. And they, uh, they credit uh, Keeb, Ronnie, and JJ Bruce for developing this FMOD sound. So if you have uh, a, uh, a file listed here under audio, then this card does have FMOD sounds. And it will show up here. This saying car audio basically means you can choose what audio to run in the car, but if it is listed like such, uh, it means it has FMOD sound. Otherwise, it will state original engine sound. 
there's no F mod sound available. And there are certain cars where F mod is not yet available, such as this Lada and other cars. Um, the F mod uh, modders are continuing to work on developing F mod sounds for all the cars and as well as some other things and so there's a lot in store and they have developed an incredible amount of F mod sounds already let me give one quick example if you find a car that is in the same class or similar to another car and you want to run the F mod sound because the F mod sounds are incredible compared to the original engine sounds just go try a comparison and you'll see uh, sometimes you can do a workaround so for instance the Ford Fiesta R2 has three different cars and they represent different years so this is the oldest one the 2015 EcoBoost you can see here this is the 2019 car and then this is the latest 2021 Rally 4 well for the 2015 Fiesta R2 you can see that there's no F mod audio shown if I select this car it's gonna say original engine sound however I would come in here and choose uh, manually the R2 T19 sounds because it's from a very similar it's from a Fiesta it's just the 2019 version uh, turbo car and yes there are going to be some slight variations but they haven't worked out the 2015 car yet and they may never because this may be basically the same engine I don't know so you can choose that okay so as we go down further install car and car slot you can ignore these two things the original Richard Burns Rally actually only had a uh, slot of six cars available. That's how the engine works. This game automatic, or I'm sorry, this plugin automatically handles the car slot, so you don't you don't actually need to even worry, worry about these right now. A quick note on tire: there are no tire compounds in Richard Burns Rally uh, as of yet. There are just dry, intermediate, and wet of the gravel and the tarmacs and then there are snow tires so those are your choices keep tire will let you uh, experience tire wear in practice so if you keep tire and then you run multiple stages uh, your tires will wear uh, damage there's three sets of damage in HU plugin safe reduced and realistic um, depending on the online rally which we'll get to in a minute uh, they'll choose the damage level realistic is very realistic and it will it will hurt if you go off the road so um, just be mindful of that that this game is very punishing on realistic damage okay and the last thing is uh, setup so when you download a card you'll get default setups which is what these files mean uh, 28d just means default gravel default snow default tarmac these are setups I've made um, you can choose a setup here just by left or right and then if you want to actually edit the setup you can go in here and edit it we'll talk a bit more about setups later I don't want to get into that too much in this video um, but just know that you can choose that there okay let's go back to the time trial hot lap rank now who hot laps in rally racing well uh, sim racers do right so it's not something that I enjoy doing that up that much but it is fun to do sometimes this is kept on their website it's just a rank system they don't split the at this time they don't split the ranks up based on car class or anything it's just who's got the fastest time so it's basically the same as practice it's just a little more limited you choose your stage you can actually go look at the ranks currently by the way you will see Patrick uh, at the top of a lot of these because he is from a different planet uh, you choose your car same same situation the tire you can't choose it's going to choose the default tire for that stage and then uh, and then you can go ahead and start the stage and run hot lap lastly let's talk about online rally so when you come in to online rally you're going to see a list of all the current rallies that run rallies only run for up to a week seven days and you'll see on the far right that it'll show a closing time uh, so every rally runs a certain length of time I don't exactly know what the different colors mean but these are just all available rallies that you can do let's choose this one just to take a quick look at this so when you come into a rally you'll see when it opens and closes you'll see who made the rally uh, and which car groups are acceptable although that's not really an exhaustive list because there's a lot more cars available that run off the side of the screen 
and then you'll see the stage list you'll see the legs for the rally so you can see that there are two legs for this rally uh, let's see if I can navigate to this so leg one stage one leg one stage two and these are the two stages you'll see the surface which means which um, you know which type of surface that the stage is in and sometimes this is mixed so it it's not always a hundred percent okay so it may say gravel but there may be tarmac sections it may say tarmac but there may be gravel sections you'll see the wear so you can see all these stages are normal rares wear so it's not going to be quite as uh, optimal as the new wear and then the the weather is listed next to that and then the tire and the tire and setup now i want you to focus on the far right tire set this here so this is uh, telling us tire and setup and it says yes yes so at the beginning of the rally obviously you will get to choose the tires that you want the type of tire and your setup that's why it says yes and yes but for the next stage stage two of leg one you will not be able to choose a tire or a setup so if you choose um, the you would choose the snow tire for this but if you chose a tarmac tire for stage one you're stuck with it for stage two now once you get to stage three it says yes yes again in other words that represents maybe a service uh, situation where you can now choose a new set of tires and a different setup and you can also see that stage four and five you cannot choose so you need to be mindful of what stages are coming these two stages four three and four are dry but the fifth stage is damp so you may want a tire that is different you may want to go with intermediate for the first two or maybe you take the dry get the benefit on the first two and then on the last stage you have a little bit less grip so that's how online rallies work you will start the rally uh, at the top you can use the left and uh, left and right buttons to go up and down and then in between that up and down you'll figure that out once you get in and you can start the rally HU plugin does allow continuing the rally so you can actually complete one leg of it back out of the rally come back a day later and finish the second leg it's pretty handy okay so i think that's all i wanted to talk about on the three types of modes in the hu plugin okay let's look at field of view in richard burns rally so i'm at this website here and i will put this in the description but this effectively is what you need to know so richard burns rally uh, FOV calculator needs to be done in a bit of a two-step uh, process so what you need to do is measure your screen height okay so instead of diagonally like we would normally do for other sims you need to measure the height this is because Richard Burns is actually based on a 4x3 configuration that's what this guy's figured out a 4x3 monitor configuration which none of us use anymore but this is how you need to calculate your FOV and then you'll take the height times 1.6667 which is effectively the 4 to 3 ratio and then you'll come over to this website here the Andy f.me FOV calculator which is pretty commonly used you'll list your distance to your screen and you will put in your screen size and shape so for me I've got an 11.75 approximately 11 and 3 quarters of an inch tall monitor times the factor I get approximately 20 okay so I'll come in here put my screen size and shape to 20 put the aspect ratio to 4.4 uh, 4 to 3 instead of 16 by 9 and then the distance to the screen and you can see that my Richard Byrne rally uh, FOV is 0.73 now I think in game I'm actually using 0.76 uh, because you can fine-tune these values just a little bit based on what works for you but this is how you calculate correctly FOV in Richard Burns rally okay when calcu uh, calculating your FOV after you do that you'll come into uh, the game into a stage and you'll double mouse click with the right mouse button and you'll find this camera setup now you have different camera options which you can hotkey which I've talked about before and so you can go between these two uh, these uh, I think there's four cameras so there's an internal camera which is the standard cockpit camera there's a chase cam and then 
two bonnet cams, I believe. The internal cam will incorporate head shake. So for some drivers, some you know people like me, I don't want camera head shake, especially because I have triple monitors and that can be a very dizzying experience if you have that. So one thing that you may want to do is switch to the bonnet cam and then set your camera up on the bonnet cam. This is up to you. If you like head shake, you can leave it on camera internal, but I choose to go with cam bonnet. Typically you want to turn the exterior of the car off because it, it may interfere. Some of the things may interfere with uh, what you see from inside the car. You'll set your FOV. This near can be set to zero and then you simply position the camera um, however you want. So X is going to be laterally, Y is up and down, and then Z is forward and aft. Uh, this dimension here we typically set to minus 55. If you set to zero it's going to, this is a pivot about the uh, Z axis, so that's a good starting point there. And then this is basically like head pitch up and down. So if the higher the number, the more you'll look up. The lower the number, the more you'll look down. So when you get finished setting your camera settings and you hit, you hit save, now every time you load this car, this will be the default camera position. You have to do this for each car. And some cars, you know, you're going to need to position the camera a bit differently based on you know, how big the cockpit is. Uh, but this is a crucial thing in getting everything correct in how you see the road and your field of view. Because if your field of view is too high, which it will default to be, it will default to be uh, somewhere over one, I believe, everything is going to seem, you're going to feel like you're in an arc old arcade racer from the early 90s or late 80s and every the road's just streaming past you super fast. And it'll be almost impossible. For one, it's not accurate. It's also not immersive, and it will be very hard to drive well, especially with this game when you need to be so precise in positioning the car in certain aspects. There's two other items having to do with the interface that I wanted to talk about real quick. What you see on the screen is you can see my digi dash or my digital dash, which is the neutral and the speed, the RPM, and so on. That's this here. This is a specific digi dash called linear dash. I'll put a link to it in the description. This is the not the one that comes default with the HU plugin, um, but this applies to either or any digi dash. So you double right mouse click to bring up the camera settings and you go into the dash and you can then adjust the position of the dash however you want and save it. Additionally, for the dash, you could have a minimal if you don't want the full dash on. This is a much smaller dash and for some of them it doesn't work properly. For the linear dash it does not, uh, but for other dashes it does and it will be a more compact, it shows less information. So if you want a minimal dash you can do that. Again, same thing, you'll adjust it with this set of parameters here and then save it when you get it positioned how you want. Secondly, part of what comes with the HU plugin is the Gager plugin, which is what you see in the bottom left. Now, mine is oriented a bit differently. Uh, that's because I, I have edited it. Let me show you how to adjust the position of this, and it, you can just turn this off completely, and you can also edit it further. So let's go out of this, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so from the main menu, we'll hit escape to go back to the, the main, menu, main options and go into plugins and the gauger plugin. So from here, you can test the plugin. You can actually disable it from here. You can turn it off in race or replay, depending on what you want. And you can also scale it and position it different ways. Okay, and then this is, you know, if you want to position it faster or slower more precisely you can change between these values and then you save the settings when you're finished and you're good this positions that additional to that within the Richard Burns folder the install folder there's a plugins folder 
and there's a gauger config uh, plugin config file you can double click and open this with notepad and this will um, allow you to adjust things even further so what I for, for me what I do is I actually run this at uh, four visible gauges and then you come down to the position of the gauges and you choose which gauges you want to run and where they position so I go throttle at zero brake one handbrake two and clutch three and then that positions them top to bottom in that order uh, and that's the only items that are shown on my gauger plugin so if I save this and reload the game you'll see that so this is an additional thing that you can adjust and again you can actually just turn it directly off if you want to do that as well I wanted to talk about pace notes just for a moment I'm not gonna to get too deep into this because this is a a large topic there's a lot of information already out there about it but part of what comes with the Richard Burns install is the pace note plugin if you double left mouse click you can bring up the pace note plugin and it will look like this this lists all of the pace notes for e for the stage you're currently on if you click on a pace note you can adjust the pace note and so on there's two parts to the pace notes in the game one is you have the co-driver sound pack which is the pack of sounds the calls that they will make there's lots of different sound packs you can download and I would personally recommend and I use uh, Yanni Lahanen's pace note plugin it's in this video I'll put a link to the description and this will um, be a set of notes calls that you can install very simply he tells you how to do it and then you have his pace notes which are quite detailed the second part to pace notes is writing your own pace notes because just because you have a set of co-driver sounds does not mean that you have new pace notes all these notes will stay the same regardless of the set of sounds this is just to call a specific sound so it's up to you to adjust the pace notes and the way you can do that is described in another video by Yanni which I will also put in the description and that is this here how I make notes this is a great resource for um, putting your own notes together and he talks about the entire process and it's quite well explained so I'll let you do that there but that is pace notes within Richard Burns now the the default pace notes on most stages are not that good uh, either the stage creator didn't have a lot of time to put into pace notes or some of the co-drivers are very limited so they just kept them simple or maybe they left them somewhat uh, vague on purpose because they understand and want people to write their own pace notes so in order to really be competitive in Richard Burns you're going to have to invest some time to create your own pace notes or at least modify the ones that are there so that you can run the corners efficiently you know what's coming and that's where you can get into wrecking stages which is a very common term in rallying and it is totally applicable here in RBR the last main topic I want to talk about with this video is car setups and immersion so I'm gonna go in and edit this setup here just as an example now when we talk about immersion what I mean is driving the car uh, with your equipment however you can based on the equipment you have um, the most realistically and if you go into the roll bar and steering you can see that for each car there's a max steering lock this value is half of the total steering rotation this vehicle used uses in the game and usually used in real life sometimes there's some exceptions and you can go look them up yourself but for instance on this car it says max steering lock 450 degrees so you would set your steering wheel to 900 degrees to drive this car if you wanted to uh, go full immersive mode and of course in this case it would be an H pattern shifter with a clutch and heel toe now talking a bit about setups there's a whole lot that goes into setups all I'm going to say is that there is a setup manager which I will put in the description which will allow you to edit setups outside of the game and does uh, help the process a little bit the HU plugin is still working on editing modifying their setup 
screen so that it is more complete and there's a few things that they leave out so the setup manager is useful I'll let you do some research on that what I will say is most setups default are not the best purposefully they want you to invest some time in creating your own setup and there is quite a bit of time to be found in a good setup so it's worth delving into once you get more comfortable with default setups and, and driving the stages in general there's definitely time to be found in setups okay there's actually one more thing really quick that I want to show you and that is the fix up INI file so within your Richard Burns Rally install folder there's a plugins folder and within the plugins folder there is a fixup.ini file now let me preface this by saying anytime you make changes to the INI file you should save a backup of the original first so I recommend that but if you open this you will see a few things most of these things should have already been set when you installed the game from the rally sims fans uh, installer because it adjusted these things based on your settings so full screen window one means yes it runs a window mode you can turn vsync on and off from here uh, the adaptive force feedback is the other item that you can turn on or off here a one being on and a zero being off there's not very many settings in here you need to be concerned about those are the main ones but just in case something does not work properly or you want to try adaptive force feedback this is where it is okay guys this is gonna wrap up this beginners guide video it's been long uh, you will probably notice that I've had different shirts on in different clips because I had to shoot this over several days and multiple times uh, I'm not you know an expert in YouTube or compiling or editing videos so I hope it turned out okay it's a little longer than I wanted it to be but that's just how it is I'm gonna put timestamps in the video so you can skip to different things if you need to and I'm gonna to try to list all the links and important things in the description uh, but again if you have any questions or comments leave them below and I'll try to answer them or get it to our team and of course if you end up on Yanni's one of his videos he does have a discord which is very helpful and there's other places that you can get your questions answered so with that being said I appreciate you watching it I hope to see you out on some stages and I hope you enjoy this excellent um, you know simulator the greatest rally simulator yet to be made and it continues to go and continues to grow so that's exciting all right we'll see y'all later